So I just want to give a quick little um, overview uh, just to what it is that we're going to be talking about in the next uh, days in the open stream, so-called open stream or open knowledge um, stream. Because of course, uh, it is also uh, a part of the program which is open to uh, journalists associated with MICT, and um, you're able to move between one group and another. Um, just very quickly, of course, the idea here was to look at some of the scenarios that exist in a state like what South Sudan, um, of course, technically a new country, <laughs> technically a reality, a new country. And we were looking at some statistics, and it was interesting to see that about three quarters of the population is under 30. Um, and of the entire population, approximately 25% um, have uh, a high or a good level of, of literacy. And the fact that three quarters of the population is under 30 um, is one of those hints uh, that, that leads us to um, speak more about the relationship let's say, uh, technology and open society, and the way in which collaborative structures, uh, the whole idea about um, an open government, the whole idea about developing a new country, a new structure, uh, becomes very important. And, and I think many of you know, uh, you know where that is coming from. We, we were looking a little bit about the history of Juba itself as a very rapidly growing city, and all the structures that need to be implemented in Juba to make it actually function as a city. And one of the things that we were interested in is, for example, can open source and open data technologies or ideas, just the concepts behind them, be actually used to build a capital city? The capital city is more than just a regular urban area. It creates symbolic, it creates administrative structures for the whole um, country. Um, and this open source model that we will be discussing about is not just a technological thing. Um, it's, it's very much about creating spaces, creating spaces for exchange, for collaboration, for sustainability, structures that allow for accountability, transparency, and participation. And these are things that are supposed to be working to enable opportunity to join communities. So it's, 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 it's all, it's, it's about how things um, are also done. Um, in, in, a lot of the, in a lot of the methodologies that are behind it, this can exist also in, in some media sustainability issues. Um, when we were talking about it in the urban context, these are some uh, uh, elements of how an open source and open strategy can be adapted, let's say, to an urban development process where there's a requirement of, of input by all the stakeholders and affected citizens, including outsiders with innovative ideas. Um, oops. Next piece, the requirement of participatory governments and decision making in the final outcome. And the requirement for the accumulated knowledge to be put into a knowledge commons for future use and reuse or remixing other projects. So this last point is, is something which is kind of a fund, fundamental um, issue in kind of all open knowledge and open data scenarios is that the experience, the material that we collect especially if they're coming from the public realm, so our information. They should be put into some kind of a form and some kind of a place that everybody can use it for other types of things. Things that we may never have even expected can be done, but perhaps you or others would know uh, what those things uh, could be. So, in a certain sense, it's also a celebration of getting together. In a, in a sense, it's also about what we call sometimes playful cleverness. So a form of, of, of hacktivism. So hacktivism, sometimes people look at it as a very negative thing, where people are breaking into computer systems and that kind of thing. But no, hacktivism is really about kind of opening things up and reordering them, making them maybe work in ways which are more uh, functional for yourself. So how, how do you create something new out of an existing thing, um, but all of the tools that one has at hand? So this idea of, it, of, of enabling also access to get into places where there is information and knowledge and experience that belongs to all of us. Um, some of the people that we've been working with in developing this idea here um, in Juba and for South Sudan are colleagues actually from South Sudan who are in Berlin. Uh, one of them, um, Ambassador Setona Abdullah Azman, 
Um, she's the only active female ambassador for South Sudan uh, right now, and she's also a wonderful uh, visionary. Her main uh, goal or her, her idea is, is to, uh, to empower women in society, uh, to really give them a stronger voice and a stronger role in building um, South Sudan. And um, many of the, of the concepts, the challenges that we look at in terms of open knowledge, in terms of creating open data systems, is very much about empowering people, empowering women, empowering um, other groups who maybe not have had as much of a voice or as much of an opportunity uh, to participate in, in the structures and the workings of society um, as they should be.